Good morning. Today we're going to deal with the distance formula to um, <clears throat> use the x and y coordinates of points to determine and compute the perimeters and areas of polygons, triangles, and rectangles. And we'll be attending to position through our critical thinking skills. Let's have our review first of our Pythagorean theorem, which means or which says, according to our Pythagorean theorem, that if you have a right triangle, so obviously a right triangle is that one that has a 90 degree angle, to get the hypotenuse or the longest leg, then we are going to use the formula a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And in that particular case, to get our c, we have to get the square root of both sides. So on the left side, we're going to cancel it, the square and the square root, because they're inverses of each other. Hence, to get the, the hypotenuse or the longest leg, then that will be square root of a squared plus b squared. That's the right triangle Pythagorean theorem that we're also going to use to determine the distance between any two points x1, y1 and x2, y2. Hence, in this case, we're simply going to draw a right triangle out of it. Now, to get the x value in here, let's call it delta x. And to get the vertical distance on this side, we're going to get the delta y. By the way, when you say delta or the triangle sign, that means the change in the values for the x and the y. So in this particular case, to get our distance d, which is in fact the hypotenuse of this right triangle, then we're going to use our Pythagorean theorem as well, which means that our distance d is equal to the square root of the delta x squared plus the delta y squared. Now let's use this formula for our particular problems. Our first problem in here involves <clears throat> a rectangle ABCD. So uh, in this particular case, B and C, uh, B to C and A to D are equilateral, meaning they're equal in distance. The same with the segment A, B, and C D also having the same length. So let's get first what we mean by A, B in here. So in order to get our distance A, B, in this particular case, to get the distance A, B, then that will just be the vertical distance between those two points. So from here to here, let's count. That will be 1, 2, 3, corresponding to the y change in y value in there. So that will be 3 units in there, which means that CD is also 3 units. Now from B to C is the same as A to D. In order to get that, let's get the horizontal distance in this particular case from A to D, and let's count it. That will be 1, 2, 3, 4. So that will be 4 units in there, which means that that will also be 4 on the segment BC. Now, in order to get the area of this rectangle, then we're going to use our formula for area of any rectangle. So the area of any rectangle is a symbol for a rectangle, meaning all four corners are 90 degree angles, then that will be a length times width. So in this particular case, we can say that 4 is the length and 3 is our width, which means we're still going to multiply those two numbers, which means that our answer will be 12 square units in this particular case for the area of this rectangle. So far in here, we haven't used our Pythagorean theorem yet to get the distance because in here, the distance are just horizontal and vertical 
distances. But let's see on our second example on how we're going to use our Pythagorean theorem. Let's go to our next example. It says here, what is the distance? Again, what is the distance between the points 1, 2 and negative 3, negative 1? So in this particular case, we're going to plot those two points first. So point 1, 2, that means uh, x value is x coordinate is 1 and y coordinate is 2. So that means 1, 2, that will be this point in here, 1, 2. And the next point is negative 3, negative 1. So that means from here, this is my x2 and y2. By the way, 1, 2 is my x1 and y1. So my x2 is negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and then negative 1 down. So in here, that will be my negative 3, negative 1. Now in this particular case, what I'm going to do is to uh, draw a line between these two points. And then after drawing a line between those two points, I'm going to make a right triangle out of it. So as we may see, those two legs, the horizontal and the vertical leg, will create a 90 degree angle along that vertex. Now let's get those two leg values. So in this particular case, let's get the horizontal distance let's count from this point to that point so that will be from here one two three four so that will be four units along that horizontal distance now from this point going down let's count how many points for the vertical distance one two three and that will be three units for the vertical distance now in order to get the distance then we're gonna compute for the uh, hypotenuse of this pythagorean theorem so let's use the distance formula distance is equal to square root of four squared plus three squared now we can use a TIA TI for calculator for it. Make sure that your calculator is cleared. And then after that, we're going to have the following. In this case, to get the square root, that will be second x squared. And then inside, I'm going to put the following values, 4. And I'll use the square button. And then add to it 3. And I'll put a square button as well. And then let's press enter to get the value. And it says here the distance will be 5. Going back, therefore, the answer in here, the distance between 1, 2, and negative 3, negative 1 is 5 units. Let's proceed to our last problem in here. It says a playground is in the shape of a hexagon. A, B, C, D, E, F. Which of the following is the best approximation of the amount of fencing needed to enclose the perimeter of this playground? So again, the amount of fencing is equivalent to the perimeter. And again, it says here that each unit is equivalent to 5 yards. So in this particular case, let's analyze our hexagon first when you say hexagon obviously that will be a six-sided polygon from the root word hexa which is six so in this particular case we can actually see that a b and e d are congruent or meaning their distance are the same Also, after that, we can actually say that BC, CD, EF, and 
AF, all of these dis distances are also the same. So let's now get the perimeter of this one. So to get the perimeter of this particular hexagon, we're going to add all of the sides. Let's start with AB. So in order to get the side AB, we're going to count what is the horizontal distance. Let's count it. One, two, three, four. So that, that means if this is four, that means ED is also four in there. It's easier because it's uh, simply horizontal distance. But for BC, CD, EF, and AF, we're simply going to concentrate on one particular segment. Let's say, for example, BC. And then I'm going to uh, draw a right triangle out of it. So if I'll draw a right triangle out of it, I'll see that the horizontal and vertical segments will form a right angle and in that particular case the horizontal distance distance in here will simply be a one unit and the vertical distance will simply be a two units counting them and in order to get bc which is the distance in here let's call it d then in that particular case we can say now that d is equal to square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared. Let's now compute for this one using our decimals this time. So I'm going to put in here square root. I'm going to go to our keyboard pad. And I'm using the square root. Inside the square root, I'm going to put 1 squared. 1 squared. And also, I'm going to add to it 2 squared. And there we go. I got an answer of 2.236. Or I can approximate it as 2.24. Go back to my problem. Therefore, D in here is approximately equal to 2.24. So that's the symbol for approximated or approximately equal to. Therefore, in order to get this one, that means that uh, BC or segment BC. Segment CD, segment EF, and segment AF are having, sorry, segment AF are having the same distance, 2.24. So in order to get the perimeter of our hexagon, A, B, C, D, E, F, then that will be equal to A, B, and E, D, which are... 4 and 4, then that will be uh, 2 times 4 plus 4 times approximately 2.24. So let's see now what will be the uh, units in this particular case. So we're going to use 2.4 plus 4.4 4 times 2.24. Let's go do our decimals once again. And we're, we're going to use 2 times 4 plus 4 times 2.24. And we're going to get 16.96 or almost 17 units. For the perimeter. So again, here, perimeter is equal to approximately 17 units. But in terms of fencing, so the amount of fencing now is equivalent to what we're going to do is to multiply the 17 units by 5 yards. So I'll multiply this by 5 yards. 
So 17 times 5 will be equivalent to 7 times 5 is 35. Put 3 on top of 1 in there. And then 5 times 1 is 5 times 3. That will be 85. Approximately, the fencing that we use is approximately 85 yards in this particular case. So that's one of the, those are two of the applications of distance. You can compute for perimeter. You can also compute for area. Now, for your work, you can try to do this particular problem in here involving circumference. What is the approximate circumference of a circle that has a center at to one? and passes through 0.25. So, formulas to be used in here are as follows. The circumference of any circle is equal to 2 pi r. And in this particular case, r in here is the distance from the center to any point along the circle. So basically what we're going to do in here is to get the distance from 2, 1, and 2, 5. Make that as the radius or the r and then compute for the circumference with the formula 2 pi r. You can use your TI-84 calculator or Desmos for this one or any other calculator as well. So that will be our discussion regarding the distance formula that was used to uh, get the perimeter and also the amount of fencing to be used on a certain um, <clears throat> shape. And uh, it can also be used for areas and some other concerns. If you have questions regarding this topic, please let me know. And once again, tell me Kwando. You can do math.